Social scientists have predicted that the population of the world is going to increase by around 9.7 billion people when we get to the year 2050, which means that farming as a science is going to have to increase its productivity sometime soon. This is why some experts have been diving into the world of vertical farming, which allows for the indoor growth of a variety of crops. But what exactly is vertical farming and how does it work? Well, whether you're a farmer yourself or just want to know more about the future of tackling growth and food demand, stay right where you are as we're about to explore everything there is to know about this indoor method of farming. So strap yourselves in and get ready for an informative ride, as things are about to get interesting. But before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any of the new videos we post. The need for vertical farming. Since we are now able to buy whichever food or drink we'd like from a variety of shopping establishments around the world, the vast majority of the public doesn't tend to think of farming as something that affects them. There seems to be a bit of a disconnect here though, as without farming and other means of primary production, these shops wouldn't have any products to pack their shelves with. In other words, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that farming is in actual fact the lifeblood of the world. But farming has become notoriously difficult over the past couple of years. Rather than being connected to and only dealing with the demands of a specific town, many farms now deal with supplying the world in general with their products. And as the population grows more and more every day, so does the demand for food without which we can't survive. In order to keep up with this increase in demand, farms have found themselves overworking their fields, not allowing the soil sufficient time to recover its nutrients. And as we're all well aware, there's no growing succulent produce without sufficient nutrients in the soil. Considering that the population of the earth is on a steady rise, along with the demand for food as a direct result, scientists have turned to vertical farming to try and bridge the gap and save our farms from overuse. This seems to be the only method available due to the world losing the vast majority of its arable land as a result result of industrial developments and urbanization. In fact, back in 2015, already scientists had reported that the globe had lost around a third of its arable lands over a period of just 40 years. So since we have no idea how much arable land we will be losing in the years to come, and keeping in mind that population growth is looking to increase by billions more people in the future, vertical farming can most definitely be said to be the answer. As to what this indoor method of farming actually is, let's go ahead and find out. Vertical farming as a method of food production. Without getting too technical, vertical farming is said to be the practice of producing food on vertically inclined surfaces rather than on flat arable land. So, rather than imagine a field of carrots as far as the eyes can see, think of a greenhouse with various layers of carrots stacked on top of one another. Since these vertical stacks are man-made and out of reach of the majority of the environment, however, scientific principles need to be exercised to enable a solid stream of growth to take place. Using Controlled Environment Agriculture CEA, technology, farmers all across the world can repurpose greenhouses, skyscrapers, and even empty warehouse containers to create create an environment rife for the growing of all forms of produce. As the name suggests, this technology allows the grower to artificially influence and control the temperature, light, humidity, and gases present to produce foods and medicines whilst indoors. In fact, we suppose you could say that vertical farming is very similar to the regular use of a greenhouse, which uses metal reflectors and artificial lighting to augment natural sunlight. But while a greenhouse still requires the input of the sun, vertical farming can actually do with out. The main purposes of this indoor method of farming are pretty obvious. First of all, this method clearly protects crops from a number of external factors that may have destroyed crops left unattended to. These factors range from natural disasters like flooding to daily attacks from pests. Secondly, vertical farming allows for all growth factors to be controlled with an insane amount of precision. If the soil is starting to lack a certain amount of nutrients, those can be applied to the crops that are in need of them without having to give the soil any time to breathe, as they say. And thirdly, vertical farming allows for the farmer to maximize his crop output per square meter of his land. Rather than having 10 carrots per square meter, you can now stack them on top of one another and have a total of 30. That's the output, which obviously has a huge influence on productivity. 
How does vertical farming work? Now that we understand what vertical farming is and why it's necessary considering the bleak future that awaits us due to population growth, let's take a look at how vertical farming actually works. There are essentially four critical areas in understanding how this indoor method of farming has developed. The first is physical layout, which clearly has to do with how the farming rig has to be set up for success. Secondly, lighting is incredibly important, which we will come to talk about in a short while. Thirdly, the specific growing medium of the produce needs to be understood, while fourthly, the farmer needs to have a solid grasp on numerous sustainability features that may affect growth over time. Since the major purpose of vertical farming is producing more food per square meter than was previously possible, physical layout is incredibly important. Simply put, all crops have their own spatial requirements, which influence just how stacked you can make these vertical shelves you are planning on using. If you don't give the crops sufficient space, you are basically shooting yourself in the foot, and and will slowly but surely discover that your productivity is on the low end of the spectrum. It might sound like the more vertical platforms you are able to stack, the greater your crop yield will be, but there's a perfect balance that must be struck here. The rule is to grow as much as you can without cramping your crops. Once the physical layout of your vertical farm has been established, you need to consider the lighting which you will have to introduce to promote growth. Remember, plant-based organisms use sunlight as a means of creating food for themselves, with it thus being necessary to make them grow. This is why vertical farmers often rely on a combination between natural and artificial light with the purpose of maintaining the perfect light level in the growing room at all times. You could even go as far as placing your crops on a rotating bed to improve lighting efficiency if you really want to, but this will most definitely increase your overhead costs. When it comes to encouraging growth farther, vertical farmers often rely on aeroponic, aquaponic, and hydroponic growing mediums rather than the soil that ordinarily farmers choose to rely on. You will thus find a large selection of husks, such as those from a coconut, as well as peat moss, being quite common when it comes to the vertical farming. It sounds strange, but using coconut husks and peat moss actually seems to encourage growth in various crops over and above ordinary high-charged soil. Scientists even suggest that these various growth mediums bring with them various levels of nutrients, with different mediums being more or less useful for different crops. In other words, you need to definitely understand your growing mediums if you want to make a success of your vertical farm. Lastly, farmers who participate in the indoor farming method must come to understand that it uses various sustainability features that will be foreign to ordinary farmers. This makes vertical farming as a method rather difficult for those who have already trained themselves in the art of field farming. In fact, since vertical farming uses about 95% less water than field farming, there's a huge risk that an already trained farmer might purposefully flood his crops. But as long as the farmer understands the effects of this sustainable procedure, things should be alright in the long run. The Advantages of Vertical Farming Vertical farming definitely sounds like the farming of the future, and it should be incredibly helpful when it comes to overly populated regions such as Hong Kong and New York, where fresh produce can be hard to come by in the very central regions of the city. Imagine a single skyscraper of agricultural land, which can produce products at a greater rate than a farm of four acres in size. The benefits of vertical farming can be summed up as follows. Number one, greater preparation for the future. Suffice it to say, vertical farming is a lot more predictable than field farming as it succeeds based on a methodology of control. The produce yielded from field farming can also fall victim to a number of disasters, with the constant increase in production having the result of robbing soil of its nutrients. Without sufficient oversight, these forms of arable land can be over-farmed, producing nothing more than non-arable land in the process. In other words, it's clear that the more controlled method of farming, being vertical farming, allows for a greater amount of preparation for the future. Number two, an increase to year-round crop production. Since one acre of an indoor area offers the equivalent in production to around four to six acres of outdoor area, there is no question that vertical farming is able to produce far more than field farming when it comes to pure numbers. And since population growth is at an all-time high, pure number is exactly what we should be looking at right now. Number three, water saving. And last but not least, vertical farming allows farmers to produce crops by using around 70 to 95% less water when it comes to the same yield of outdoor area. This makes vertical farming especially useful in those areas experiencing droughts. 
It used to be that droughts were the end of all farming activity. But with vertical farming, this doesn't need to be the case. The disadvantages of vertical farming. The only true disadvantage when it comes to the vertical farming is the limitations that the farming method currently has laid against it. The financial feasibility of the method remains uncertain to this day, as it still is considered to be pretty new in the grander scheme of things. Labor and energy costs are also incredibly high, with many calling vertical farming out for being far too reliant on technology. But what do you think about this indoor farming method? Be sure to let us know in the comment section down below.